All right, now we're still in 2.5, piecewise functions. <clears throat> we're moving on to graphing. I've got it on the smart board. I'm going to work it over here as well. Uh, G of X, you know that the letter means nothing. It could be F of X, it could be G of X, it could be H of X. Those are common letters <clears throat> that we use. It doesn't, G of X has nothing to do with the problem. Then I have X plus 1 uh, if X is less than or equal to 2. And then 4x minus 1 if x is greater than 2. And this gives us kind of a big, a large graph, but uh, it's a good example. Okay? All right, your first step is, is going to be to come up with your own t chart. Okay? An x and a y. We need three points to go with the first part, and we need three points to go with the second part. We need six total points. Okay? We're going to look here at this value. This value is 2 here and here, and that's kind of, for lack of a better word, that's our critical value. That's where things are happening. At 2, things happen. With everything that's 2 or less, this is the graph. For everything that's bigger than 2, this is the graph. Okay, so at 2, important things are happening. The way that we're going to pick our points for our t-chart is we're going to take 2, and we're going to take the two points less than two. So write that down. We're going to take our critical value over there. We're going to take two points less than two. And it normally gives us two good points <coughs> to work with. Critical value. I'm going to draw a line because that's one of the graphs. Then I'm going to take two again, and I'm going to pick the two points above two. So I pick two, and I pick the two points below it. Then I pick two, and I pick the two points above it. All right? I know, I know this may be a little confusing, but just stay with me. All right? Here's the next question. When I plug in zero, is it going to go into the top or the bottom? Top. It's, going to go in the, it's going to go in the top. Watch this. All three of these are going to be in the top. And if all three of these are in the top, then what are all three of these going to be in? They have to be in the bottom. So these three are in the top, these three are in the bottom. It won't always be that way. These three could have been in the bottom and these three in the top. It will change. It, it could all change depending on that inequality. All right, are you with me? But how would two be in yeah, the bottom? Hold on, we're, we're getting there. You good? You're thinking. You're, you're, that's good, you're thinking. We're going to get there. All right, so we're in the top. We plug in zero, left-handed, what do we get? We get one, all right? We plug in one, what do we get? Two. We get two, very good. We're filling in our T-chart. We plug in two, and what do we get? Three. We get three. Here's the question. We plugged in two into this equation. Was it a true statement? Is it okay for two to be there? Yeah. Yes, it is, because two is less than or equal to two. Do you remember the old days when I had like x is greater than 2 and then x is less than or equal to 3? Right? And you had to graph that on just a number line. There's 2 and you would have an open circle going to the right. And then on over the 3, you'd have a closed circle going back to the left. Well, anytime that bar is there, that means that dot is going to be closed. So because this is a true statement, because it's okay to put 2 there, and because we have that bar there, I'm just going to put a little C here. I'm going to go ahead and write it out. I'm going to go ahead and write closed. That may not, you may not understand why until just a minute, but just go ahead and write closed for me. You'll understand why in just a minute. All right? On the flip side, we go to the bottom. We stick in 2 right here, and what do we get? We get 4 times 2 is 8, minus 1 is 7. Very good. But some, some students already noticed that when I stick 2 right there, 2 is not greater than 2. That's a false statement. And, likewise, we don't have the bar there. If the bar is not there, then what does that tell us? It's open. It's an open circle. So write open right there. You'll understand why in just a second when I go to gray. Alright, we stick in 3 and what do we get? We stick in 3 here and what do we get? 11. 11. We stick in 4 there and what do we get? 15. 15. Alright. So we have three points and closed for one graph, and we have three points and open for the other graph. Okay, now comes the fun part. I'm going to graph. 
I know I gotta have a bunch of points on my graph because this goes all the way up to 15. So I'm gonna go ahead and write those out. One, two, three, four. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I know that's large and it, it's just not very friendly, but uh, it's, it's doable. Let me erase this and that'll help us. All right, so now comes the final graph. We've got to be able to graph. Adam, you should be paying attention to me. Zero, one is right here. Zero, one, I put a dot. One, two, one, two, and I put a dot. Then the last one, two, three, and what kind of dot is it? What does that say right there? A closed dot. So here I have a closed dot. I have a point and a point. Do you think that the graph should be going to the right? Or do you think the graph should be going to the left? Yeah. Just take a guess. What right. do you think? Right. I said right. What's your critical value? Two. Two. This dot is closed. And let me show you a trick. You see this inequality? Right? We did the top, right? This, this line that we're graphing is the top. You see the inequality? Watch this right here. Now, tell me what you think. Where do you think the arrow was pointing? One. To the left. It's going away from the critical value. It's starting here, and it's going in that direction forever and ever and ever. How do I know that? A couple different reasons, but x is less than or equal to 2. That means it's only true for all these values where x is less than or equal to positive 2. Okay? All right, let's do the other one. Here, now we're graphing the bottom. Where are we going to start? At 2, 7. And what kind of circle is it going to be? What kind of circle is it going to be? It's going to be open. So 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. At 2, 7, I have a nice open circle. Why is it open? It's open because there's no bar right here. That's why it's open. Okay? Now what's my next point? 3, 11. So I go 3... 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, let's see. 8, 9, 10, 11. Right here. 3, 11. All right. What's my next point going to be? 4 and what? 4 and 15. All right. You got a little practice underneath your belt. Now tell me which way do you think the arrow is going? It's going up and to the right. It's going just like this. How did you know that? How did you know that it was going in that direction? First of all, it's going away from the critical value. Second of all, the inequality tells you right there, it's showing you which way the arrow goes. It's pointing and telling you, hey, it goes to the right, it goes to the right. Okay, so let's recap. Put your pencils down when you're finished copying and just pay attention and recap. I know you all are a little sleepy after lunch, but recap. Here we go. First step was to pick a T-chart. Pick six values. Two less than the critical value, the critical value twice, and two greater than that number, okay? Figure out is this top and is this bottom? It doesn't matter, it could've, this could have been the bottom and this be the top. Then you gotta figure out which ones, figure out your points, figure out which one's closed and which one's open. Then you come over here and graph. You graph one of them and you gotta figure out if it's open or closed. Understand that every graph is gonna look something like this, right? It could be like that. It could be the same point. This happens sometimes. Right? It could look like that. They both could be going down. That one could be closed, and they both be going down. Okay? They both could be going up. One's closed and one's open. That one's going up and that one's going up. Right? But what you will never see is they both go in the same direction. You won't see that. And you won't see them both going to the left. Okay? You won't see that either. They're always going in opposite directions. Question? How do you decide again if it's closed or open? <clears throat> Good question. If it has the inequality, if we're doing the top, and it has the inequality symbol and or equal to, then it's closed. If it doesn't have that bar underneath, then it's going to be an open circle. And what does that mean? In the big scheme of things, what does that mean? That means that this graph starts at, at point, sorry, at 2.000001, right? It doesn't include 2. This graph starts where? at 2 and includes 2 and it goes in that direction forever. This one does not include 2. You see what I'm saying? This does not include it. This one does. 
It can look like this. It can look like this. They both could be going up. I can connect them. And they're both